There she is! Dinyarzad! We're back! Just as promised, Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went. A lot of things happened there. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. <sighs> My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Dropping. It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. It's all right, Dia. I merely said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. <sighs> the festival's tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So, Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my guardian knight. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. <sighs> oh, uh, you two must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. Whoa, you're so thoughtful. Paimon's so ready. Here we are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. It looks really nice. <laughs> Not at all. Just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty. Paimon can tell you stories next time. Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah, it'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. It's a deal. Good night, Dunyarzad. I may be too excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Paimon's starting to really look forward to the Sub-Zero Festival, too. Will there be lots of yummy food? Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, Traveler. Ah, did we oversleep? We should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um... As expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, but shall we? Let's start with the stalls over there. Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. They all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! This is a stall offering foods from the Haft Mewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers... 
and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff. Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. So, what's the Haft Mewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another sub festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukushafa mushrooms, lunar lotuses, Sumero roses, sunsetias, kapulatas, hara fruits, and zaytun peaches. So, the sub festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. We just use the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait, but if that's the case, if Sumero uses vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Archon, then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl, juicy meatballs, grilled steak? Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Natlon as soon as possible! <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. Thanks! All right, how about we also check out some of these other stalls? Dear customers, would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected, and all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunya Azad says it? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give it a try? Okay, one moment. Hmm... It's the moon. Paimon wants to take a look, too! Uh... Is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm... Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh, wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Yes, but this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. They say the sub Festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of Subzeros will be just as impressive. Zeros! Zeros! Attention! Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. It's a weird guy with a weird hat. Hey! It's Dunyarzad! Wow! wow. <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzerus festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Uh, um, 
The Hallowed Knight of Flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzerus Festival. All right, little soldiers. Take your Yalda candies and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another Sabzerus Festival icon and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad. <laughs> so I have ready to <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random Tried them before? Be a flavor. It's a I'm believing you. Right. Which one do you want? Okay. is that every has a good time festival so please take both boxes basically actually i just remembered that i left something behind to get hey might have this is you you're what never about you for One punch and those rabid dogs will expose them. They really. Yeah. Don't waste your time. About me, this is my job. Yourself. <laughs> I am. 
when it breaks. Did I'm coming out to this I'm fine. It's just as normally they wouldn't have been. Uh, that. <laughs> Junior's odd. I wasn't trying to make you cry. I'm not going to lose my. weapon get hurt just really easily Are you feeling unwell again, Junior's? Or somewhere. <laughs> yes, much better. There's no life have been much more. We love. Well, one out of my Nothing. The joy ever this and all the servers around like deep. This way does arrive. Too so much. Oh. 
Alex and Alex. There will always be looking host. Not aware from out but this one the keep zeros festival. The Lobro. Large scale religious festival. The Grand Sage has already granted you much lean. I he failed. I need to it's a hard Damn. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such friends? Our I believe that our Archon never rejected With day that prohibits public performances. When I return. Are you all <sighs> just now? Or investigate if we were caught. Seeing you care this much feelings is enough. If you you can we'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. The next one.
Not at all. Uh, you seem kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I thought most and it's a little point actually was respect from foods to symbolize the seven virtues for moon. The moon signifies escape. It means wish to overcome your fear. The only rock. Ferris Flowers is another festival I Night of Sold Candies. Even exist. I'm I'm away. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one after right. Setia. What you found? Uh, oh, Paimon! No. You like to eat. You don't look. The kitchen. That, that burned. Didn't look tasty at all.
actually gonna eat it? Uh... Would this be a case of spadav? We go out again and try something else. Sides, no matter who Paimon doesn't quite follow you. It's like, like I Deja. But my days have been the same. Even if I were. With your. Performances. We will later through the Akash. <sighs> the festival. Go sell. Pretz. True, but... <sighs> Next year... Probably <sighs> by then. You still couldn't figure out? And stop. How did I get it? Things like Ashton.
Continue to monitor the variants. need I have some boxes of candy here. It's not that. And Congrats! Oh, indeed! All of them? That couldn't I kind of Isn't that Junior's son? That the what we should It's coming. The catalyst for restoring our mind. And the knowledge catalyst was just using our minds. Hey! Yeah. 
Sensitution. Single paper reading those memories from your consciousness. You now and she doesn't have a left You need some ask for the truth. That's on you to find out. I can break out of this samsara. I might the save. Must have missed memories say that we've already done this many times, but let's go talk to people again. It's more. Hey, it's you. Where's your co friend? She. Uh, she's feeling a little. Unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? I know that no one dreams. No one
Anyway, we're just what long was my div compliment person. That's a we can understand it. Well, exactly what I yell at. So you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, you get into. Huh? Thought you just lost. Are you serious? Does that thing act in real life? Illusions and lies. Are there. Anything more specific is beyond reach of mere morals. Surely, so. That's so dumb. Like a series. Let's go find her. You came. Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss... I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad, you couldn't have known. The words right out of my mouth. What's going on? All right, so this is the situation. Her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Real Dunyar's odd? Uh, where? I told you that you need Dunyar's odd. Her 
perceptive. Does she have invisible intent? Dunier's laying down here, isn't she? What's she doing? I know she was here. I. Her or something like. The account was a you have a point. The Akash for no the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire population knowledge to the people. It compiles the entire populace knowledge to the people. Hmm, wait. I get the grant's knowledge part. People have always the Akasha for. Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge? Oh, I. What do you think? You, the is. Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, "Knowledge always comes at a price." Compiling the entire knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so... Turn Sumeru City into a An excellent and the analogy compares Sumeru City to a massive <sighs> I love it. And I can't Maybe that'll solve this problem. Words. When this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal. The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for which important clue? Using our terminal, beep anyway. Ever. I heard it too. Art and aren't messing with us. There was definite beep, but it sounds coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminal. Phase one.
You adapted. Akashi Terminal night, but we still heard. What the... uh, now, Akashi definitely is some. Doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if everybody's That's an experience. If we're lab rats, I guess I'm the moon. Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth, so you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. Uh, okay. Why? So, find her. If I'm... Time correct. Snappers. Baby. Hurt. Time. This time, I'm so surprised to get out unscathed. Amateurs. Shh. How did you know about my sword? I told anyone about it. Please don't tell Miss Junior's ad. Anything strange? Do you already know? Word. Hmm. If I had to say something. It's weird how such a new weapon could feel so bad. I've already used listening to battles. Seeing the of are using this? Right. Missionaries and warriors. Feeling really hopeful. We right. earlier something like I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still oh, I was gonna say, can you read? Do your thing. Whew, it's finally night time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have been. We found out even though she heard every other time she fought the kidnapper. Do you think this has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey! What kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub zeros of Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's... Shut down! Get some breath. No, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. People always say they feel a sense of relief after they the doctor. That's that. Yeah. It's happy. 
Five-way up Okay? It feels like it's... Compared to what we stand to achieve, be something and trivial. Samsara? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with arms, out of touch. Something that help you clear your minds. Looking out for us after all. If it's been together, you two have everything to me. Uh, Paimon's thing. Maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had. If you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have... Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. Hmm. To put hmm. it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a That isn't simple at all. Talk to Miss D. Might learn. Let's find our latest clue after all. Go! There you Didn't get hurt today! I don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new great Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just... familiar. Wait a second! Did you know I got a new great sword to begin? Tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation? What happened? Was um, don't think that. You. Let me get telling me that my already got used to this great. But yes, your memory's being free. Then I'd have to agree. The muscle. Oh, why do you the things we used, the money, the food we ate, common sense said that should have wrong the way I wouldn't. Notice that. Right. They could use the to record what everyone okay, and then use the city's resources to punish everything. It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have
for a little long. are the result of several days of practice. Let's say the same it be hacked to pieces by now. That's true, but what if it did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce I left during Strike is calculated. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as the state of mind as I made each strike. It's their unique style. And even the same cut twice. It's impossible to copy marks. Really impossible. What if they use some fancy machine to every single mark? Lofted Photo can never replace an artist. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks of combat training. Whew! I hope that area. Hey, his scholars lately. It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should ask. Page. See you later. theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Strange? Huh? Leaving the city? You're right. It's really strange. Solution. Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. I'm on Is tunnel vision too hard for their theories? Or because I'm too tired? How about Maybe we something about the city. We're back! You're back early today. Did you learn something new? Sort of. We're mostly now. And we also aren't in the real world. In time, we are City. Remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that. Did? Right. What happened? Did we the plans? What did we say? Ah. <sighs> I was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that times came back for. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night about it. Time during our investigation before we know it be the next day. Theory. Where should Paimon begin? Just you Traveler Worth of Memories. Can't we? 
leave the What is How? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order for We announced a lockdown for some a complete Let's go and them. Hello, sir. Can't we leave the city today? today thing else and kind of I would have left this stupid post long ago climb for the wall is a good spot and the Okay, Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. And please, be careful. Oh, memories! Traveler! <laughs> Paimon thought Paimon would never see you again. You, you just disappeared! Paimon waited for you for hours and hours at the city wall, and you never came back. You promised Paimon that you were only taking a quick look. <gasps> Paimon, calm down. He's here now. I don't think he understood what you were saying. <laughs> Paimon doesn't care. Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay. Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire Okay, Paimon will forgive you. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world. Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside. Something like a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! I'm done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. 
To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's go then. Let's expose those sages. Ah. <sighs> All right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay. See you tomorrow, Traveler. That covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our sub festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. That's one heck of an info dump! It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls! But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside. That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... Uh, uh, why did the message end right there? What did the Traveler want to say? What are those spaces? Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the sub Festival, also disappears, and we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hey, where are you going? Do you want some alone time to think? <sighs> all right then, Paimon won't disturb you. The dance of Subzerus is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth! You're back! I've been waiting forever for you two! Judging by the looks on your faces... 
Are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now... How did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from Greater Lord Rukadavada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? <laughs> so you noticed. Uh -huh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> It wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali, Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. 
After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey! What's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way! Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it! Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just, what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But... Personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just their filler. You know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness, and it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her, after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom, so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she's still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and more. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. 
No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go. Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh, that's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control, like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine, just... Um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub -Zeru's festival tradition or something? Less questions! More wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So... You have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh. You're... What? Faki? 
Sorry, but only one portion of Yalda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. It seems like everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her. But none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Tia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Tia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. Traveler, were you just taking your anger out on those guys? <sighs> you and Nahida both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Wow, Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about. She must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Hey! Where are you off to now? It's Dunyarzad's puppet. Traveler, you must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Dunyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's Dance of Subzeru's. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh. So she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Uh... Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler. Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait, they're not reacting. Have they been scared stiff? 
Oh, of course! If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this. So they're just substitutes. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisars went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah, uh, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice. Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, how? Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, huh? You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Hey! Th they disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore! But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage! It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real Padisaras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. The point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the First Sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife, lying next to him, said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> What a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub festival is almost over, too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub as beautiful as we can. Ah, oh, good morning, traveler. Oh, Paimon feels...
feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Paimon's head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? Paimon thinks it was after the Subzeru's festival. The Subzeru's festival? Have we finally escaped from the Subzeru Samsara? Quick, take off your Akasha terminal! She's not in her room. What happened? Huh? What usual spot? Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the Subzeru's festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream, and I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. You're actually Nahida, aren't you? Paimon felt like Catherine was acting weird when we met at the Subzerus festival. And, Dunyarzad, did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm, how about by the Traveler's favorite bench? Let's talk about Dunyarzad first. It's such a relief that she's all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After we parted on the last day of the Subzerus Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter, this proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream. Where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible. But it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end. And not a moment too soon. Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. <sighs> I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After mm. all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree and a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said world and forget me. Yeah, so you do know. We've been wanting to ask you what that was about and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm, it seems like the traveler established a connection to Ermensoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Ruka Devata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King. The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermensoul. 
That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermensoul? Oh, Tainari also said that Ermensoul is sick. Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermensoul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Ermensoul's fate, as well as to Vats. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... we happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you.